No, just go ahead. Say what you were going to say, um, Scopeless. No, what I was going to say was I've noticed uh, since Jobs died, it was like the next day, uh, you know, I, like I personally, and, you know, I'm sure a lot of other people have as well, been inundated with, um, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, scam, like, like scam, uh, scam mails and scam instant messages from, you know, people that are part of a botnet. Oh yeah, I, I've been seeing what was really probably the stupidest Apple spam I've been seeing in the last two weeks has been get your iPhone 5 uh, and like scams related to an iPhone 5 having something to do with Steve Jobs and I'm like, boy, you guys don't update your botnets, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 the one I, like the one that I've been getting, uh, and, and, and actually um, one of my friends had uh, like one of my like one of my uh, like one of my friends that's on my Yahoo had uh, sent me this. Well, it came from his account, so I basically told him, like uh, you know when I actually finally got in talk uh, got got in touch with him and it wasn't a, and I was able to verify that it wasn't a bot. I told him, look, you know <laughs> your stuff got compromised. You need to change your password, some more stuff, and, and your system was right. But um, but. But that particular one was like, yeah, you know, uh, Apple's giving away uh, 5,000 MacBook Pro, you know, here. Uh, you know, uh, click this link and go sign up for it and everything. It's yeah, not- I, I, I would never click a link in an email and call yeah. me crazy. Oh. Apple doesn't strike me as one of those companies that it, to give away. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. well, oh, we're going to give away stuff because our founder died. <laughs> yeah. Well, if Apple were to give something away, then they would have that information on their website. Like when they gave those um, bumpers, when they gave free bumpers. They, they'd give a, they would give a press announcement or something. Yeah, they yeah, would have a whole event. <laughs> you know, say, yeah, you know, we're going to make this, like we're going to give this thing away. Hi, uh, hi, we're celebrating Steve Jobs' death by bankrupting the company. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Well, well, they actually are holding a private, um, like they actually are holding a private event. Oh, I, I, I'm sure whenever that big flying saucer corporate building gets done, they'll have some kind of memorial there to Jobs. I'm all but certain on that. Yeah, well, I'm talking about they're going to have. Um, well, they'll probably have a statue there after that thing. But um, but no, I'm talking about they're you know they're having an event this month. Uh, you know, but, but, but it's a private event, only Apple employees can, can you know, um, but, but yeah, yeah, uh, uh, I, like, I'm trying to think, there was, like, there was one time that Apple did have, like, an event going, like, like they had, like, um, some kind of giveaway going where, uh, customer number, whatever, uh, you know, in the iTunes store, it's like, uh, you know, thousands of dollars. Oh, you're talking about like the one billion app download. They got like ten thousand yeah. dollars worth of stuff and yada yeah. and yada yada. But they, yeah, and I remember that because they called them and they hung up on them. <laughs> they called, but who called them? Apple called whoever had that iPhone, and they, oh, and they it, hung up on them. Yeah, they hung up on them. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Click. <laughs> I mean, not the money, but you know, the credit or whatever in their account. Uh, and they eventually believed them. It's like, but it's, you know, it's like we're, we're so, it's like, oh yeah, something great. I won something. Sure, click. <laughs> it's like, well, well, I like, like, nobody expects, like, like, nobody expects really to get a phone call from Apple, <laughs> you know, or anything like that. It, you know, it was like that, um, I, I remember I read one story about, uh, there was this, uh, developer that and Steve Jobs himself called him to discuss it and everything, and it was a total shock to the guy because he wasn't expecting to have, that, That's you know, a good transition to actually get, 
get get on to the topic of why we're here this time. Where do we want to start? Do we want to go over the iPhone 4S announcement any? Do we want to focus primarily on jobs? Do we want to focus on the reactions people have been having? Or to, do we want to focus on the grandstanding? It's, y'all are more the Apple fans. I'm more the... I... I don't really like Apple, and I make no efforts to hide that whatsoever. I have a difference of opinion with the Apple philosophy, but one of the grandstandings that has been going on is people trying to, you know, dance on Jobs' grave and go, he never contributed anything, and you know, regardless of my personal opinions about his philosophy and Apple and other things, we're here talking about him. He obviously had some impact on the you know, industry. <laughs> yeah, well, well, look, you know, a lot of, you know, um, yeah, a lot of people, you know, there have been a lot of people who are pouring their hearts out, you know, over a Steve Jobs passing, but yeah, as with anybody dying, there will always be a, you know, a, 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 a group of people that, you know, really just want to, you know, tear down that individual's image. You know, now whether or not, you know, they actually believe that Steve Jobs uh, contributed anything or not isn't really, you know, isn't really that relevant. You know, they're always... No, that, 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 that's relevant. It, it's a no, no, I mean, it, What, what like, about you, Marcel? No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not, I'm not saying that they're not entitled to their opinion or, or what have you. I'm just saying that, um, I'm just saying that, you know, you know, you know, in terms of, like, in terms of whether or not, like, 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 some people, some people just say, oh, well, you know, you know, like, uh, he's never contributed to, uh, a charity. How do you know? Because he didn't say anything about it? You know, that's pretty flimsy. You know, um, people say that he's never contributed to technology. Like, well, lots of people that are involved in the technological realm disagree. You know, even people for all intents and purposes, are his competitors disagree with that? Um, you know, it's relevant to you know. To well, point I, out. I, I I have something to say on that, but first, uh, Marcel, do you have anything to add on, uh, sign, or like, where do you want to start? Oh, well, go ahead and say what you want to say first. Well, I. I the debate on whether he contributed to technology comes down to a thing. Uh, and that is a lot of people want to say, you know, he didn't create any of the technology. He's not a coder. He, you know, he's a glorified salesman. And all that may be, and all that's, you know, that, that, that is kind of true. Um, Steve Jobs' contribution was the Jobs wrapper. If you were one of the people that the Jobs wrapper of, I want it to be this device and it must work like this and it must be this, if that wrapper appealed to you, it was the product you wanted to buy. It's one of the few reasons that I will say is a valid reason to buy Apple products because if that's the wrapper you want, that is the Apple wrapper. Uh, and, you know, even if you want to simplify that all the way down to, he's just a glorified salesman. He's a multi-billion dollar salesman. And there's a very few multi-billion dollar salesmen on the planet. Well, Less than well, ten, true. really. Well, well, okay, yeah. I mean, I've heard that argument before. Um, you know, my response to that would be, okay, you know, uh, you know, by, well, like, yeah, you know, he is a, he is a, a very well, like, he, like, he's a very well-known salesman. Uh, you know, he knows how to talk, and he knows how to act in a way that makes you want to buy his product, right? Well, not you specifically, but you know, <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, now, the, the thing about it, however, is that his job wasn't just to sit there and sell products. His job was also to, uh, you know, make decisions on which direction the company would go into. You know, in that respect, he's a lot like a coach on a football team. You know, I mean, the, the coach doesn't catch a ball, he doesn't, pass, he doesn't pass a ball, he doesn't do anything with the ball, he just tells the football player what to do. You know, you know, he calls the play, and that's what Steve Jobs did. You know, and, I mean, Apple had talented people before Steve Jobs arrived at the company, you know, before he returned to the company, and the company was going to go bankrupt. You know, and I mean, you put 
all the razzle dazzle you want onto a bad idea, it still won't fly. So you know, I, I, I remember it, that apple. That was things going on in that apple. Like, yeah, the speakers are too close to the hard drive. Can you turn them down? <laughs> Wait, you talking about the original? Uh, I mean, the uh, old apple. I'm talking about bankrupt? the one that was going bankrupt, the, the one that you're talking about there. The, the, the one that was going bankrupt, they didn't really do that. They tried uh, basically to make, you know, uh, you know, they tried basically to make uh, the same computers that everybody else made. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm like I don't recall the like I don't recall like I remember that they had um I like I remember that they had a lot of problems selling their low end computers over their high end ones. And you know, they had a lot of like they had a lot of uh, problems with the economy of scale. Uh you know, they just didn't have a good business plan and they weren't going in a good direction. The consumers were largely confused by their product lineup. Uh, Steve Jobs' app was the one that was more along the lines of, oh, uh, you know, that speaker is interfering with something. Uh, reduce it, right? Uh, old Apple was more just a mismatch of ideas with no direction. Okay. Bit? Yeah. Well, uh, going back from the beginning, I, I think that um, bottom line is Jobs contributed, and he's more than a glorified salesman. That's the role he later on took. Yeah. He, he is actually a coder. He may not, he may not be like uh, modern times or whatever, uh, having to worry about that, and that's why you hire people, right? You start a company, you, you've done your bid, you have other people do the stuff uh, for you. I mean, it's, I don't, I think it's. Uh, if the, those that want to try to insult Jobs, had they been there with him, whether they agree with him or not, would obviously partake and, and, and see uh, the contributions he did do to technology. Now, uh, I'm I'm known as a supporter and a, and a big time critic when I think that uh, Apple does stuff wrong or Jobs is wrong in ideology. I'll, I'll be the first one to call him a hypocrite, like I did on on uh, Flash. But that doesn't mean that he's not. Uh, technologically savvy. He's that plus he was a, a great salesman and, and, and an artist. Well, no, and like I said, it, it goes back to it, what his he had the Jobs wrapper, and he had a part in designing that wrapper. He didn't just take somebody else's wrapper and sell it. He said, I want the wrapper to be like this. It, well, the, I mean, the, it, to me, it's like there were very clear things that he was after, that he did partake in in, in creation. But with any company out there, um, are we going to be that uh, purist about things and saying, well, no, you weren't the actual one that, that invented that chip or, or whatnot. I mean, and this is going to be, then become nonsensical, and then, then nothing would matter at that point uh, for anybody. <laughs> I mean, what, what credibility does it matter for anything, right? Um, so no, I, I, think, I don't think there is any debate. It's, it's, it's quite simply you either want to recognize what Jobs did or to live in denial is, is, is pretty much uh, my, my stance on it. And uh, Like I said, I don't agree with their, a lot of things, especially like mostly iOS things that, that, that he partook, part, not partook in, but I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, no, he, wasn't, he wasn't a coder or he had no idea about technology and all he is is a damn salesman that, that got lucky and was able to brainwash people. You know, that's totally nonsense. Well, and, and on that note, you know, like getting into some of his contributions, I mean, it's known that the primary reason the current run of iPhones has glass instead of plastic was because that was what Steve Jobs wanted. And um, one thing that a lot of people are wondering is going forward, you and me have talked about this already, you know, that it's a, it, even if Apple goes down the complete wrong road, it's going to take them until 2020 and beyond to really screw stuff up. You know, they will happen very slowly over a very long time. Yeah, do we yeah. think uh -huh. those decisions will continue to be made or do we think um, things I like that? that I, I, the most dangerous thing that Apple can do, in my opinion, is what they did when Jobs left the first, or was kicked out the first time. Um, when someone takes a role and then 
like Scully, does things what they believe Jobs would do to make something successful, uh, you, you, then you're completely wrong. I mean, it's it. They need to just find someone. Uh, like I stated in one of my videos, they have all the cash in the world to take risks now, and find that that artistic tech visionary somewhere out there, or search with an Apple and, and take a risk on somebody, and then just get behind them. They can be wrong, you know. They may turn out to be uh, bad, but you know what? They have the cash to support that risk. If they stay with a cook direction, or somebody that says, "Well, I'm going to do things like I believe Jobs would do," that's the most dangerous thing I can do because nobody knows what Jobs would do. Okay. Well, no matter. Uh, no uh, matter uh, and honestly, I'm I'm getting a feel for that. That at least for the immediate time, what Apple is going to do is they're just going to stick to what they currently have. And, and but roll Jobs with had that. had a roadmap to a certain extent. Right? Yeah, I know, but, but at, yeah. at some point in the next two to three years, maybe upwards of five, whatever that roadmap was is going to run out. At well, that point, are they going to just keep doing I'm, the same I'm thing? Caveat, though. I'm going to put a caveat, though. The thing of it is, is that you can have a roadmap, but the dynamics of business change so rapidly that a roadmap, even, even a year and a half out, can be drastically wrong. So, um, when that happens and, and, and the market has a response, maybe a product you made or technology comes up, those types of decisions that say, well, should we incorporate this? What should we do? Well, what would jobs do? That's no, they can't. They can't do that. They because it, no matter the amount of university that jobs are going to make to create a, 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 an ethic uh, to, to try to maybe see a direction of the way the business uh, should go. I'll give him some of that. He can he can teach the way he would like people to, to have protocol within the business procedures, logistics. But the the decision where it says, "Hey, the market just did this. This chip just came out. What do you think?" That's a that's a jobs thing where jobs can be on road X um, for five miles and all of a sudden hit the brakes, you know, slam them, turn around and go another damn road. That was that's that was uh, the tech gift that Jobs had and led his company. Because of the tech experience, and then was able to sell it by using his artistic side uh, as, as well. So that can't be replicated uh, or, or or guessed at. They just need to find, take while well, they have all the cash in the world, take a risk, find somebody. Um, like I said, they could be spot on, or they could be a complete failure. But and, and, and on that, it can, it doesn't have to be a Steve Jobs 2.0. It can be a hive of people that no, collectively. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But if you want to keep like the flair of Apple, which is that artistic nature to things, then I I think there's plenty of people like that HP probably just let go that were part of Palm and uh, other companies that, that that have been shed throughout the time. But I think have, have you, that you mean some of the people that left head. Apple to go write WebOS because they couldn't quite? No, it's not about Apple and WebOS. What I'm after is that. There are a, 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 a tremendous amount of companies right now that are just are, are, are what I consider packagers, right? They they're 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 good at volume and logistics and not much creativity behind it. Uh, and the thing that Apple did well is because of its model, which that is debatable on, on how its model is, because they like to have the walled garden. The walled garden usually puts you at number one for a while and until it becomes marginalized. But the success of Apple of recent is, let's take a look. Well, desktops, are obviously, the Mac started to chip away, chip away, chip away. But it's still a very marginal commodity, a desktop. Well, they spearhead into music players with the iPod, and bam, a whole new business venture opens up. After that, music players become marginalized. I, and I'm skipping a lot with iTunes and and, and because the music industry and the licensing that they got into that created a whole new other universe. But yeah, and that was more made, something else going on. The point was they kept opening new markets and new markets. And I mean, geez, we just went from music players to phones to tablets, all of which have existed really before Apple uh, got their their uh, hands on them and, 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 and uh, took them big time. And, and that's the thing that was that we have to we have I refuse to say that oh all these legions of people are all brainwashed no they make a choice and of course I'm, I, I have videos that will state that a tablet is a fad that's a good thing to be a fad but they're, they're selling a tremendous amount where 
too much that when they're when your numbers are that large a large part of that demographic is are, are going to be savvy consumers that are that are able to you know say look this is either a pile of crap or or, or move on and obviously enough of those people will defend those products and will accept the 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 um, I don't know, the, the package that, that Apple was selling and, and, and consider that to be a better package than others. So there's not all this brainwashing and, oh, yes, this product technology existed before Apple took it, and so now Apple's just copying this. And I mean, this is all nonsensical. There are other companies that, that have done the exact same thing where, okay, there was a product launch. It was not successful. I mean, it barely made a blip on the radar. Maybe had two news articles written after it, and then Company Y comes along, and it's all of a sudden success. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's well, that's it, how it, innovation it, works. Exactly. It's not. Sometimes you're ahead of your time, and 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 sometimes you may be you may be positioned correctly via a timeline, but you failed somewhere else. And uh, I think that see. I, uh, my subscribers, at least my YouTube channel, I have both camps. Like, if I say something for Windows and I get heat from the Mac people, if I say something <laughs> for the Mac and I get heat from the Windows people, but luckily both camps stay with me because I think I, I present a pretty fair uh, and, and credible stance on things. But nonetheless, you, I have those two camps, right? And, there, and those two camps represent people that are just intolerant or unaccepting of... Of what may be on the other side of on the other side of things on the other side of the coin, and and it's sad that well, it, it, it's like you're saying the reverse of the um, the exact reverse of the Apple doesn't do anything or the people that say well people are buying Android because they're retarded. It's like, I know, I, I know, and I slam I slam Apple Apple supporters to say it's like. Uh, there's many pundits that will just say, "Oh, why would anybody buy Android? Uh, well, why would anybody buy iOS? It's just it's a valid argument, you know." But it, it's it, the, the thing. The, the thing of it is, is that there are people that I'm I'm kind of pissed off about. Especially there was an article that said the iPhone 4s um, uh, has high sales numbers because people because jobs die. In other words, jobs did incurred more sales. And this, to me, that is just to spite your own nose. Um, Vicious journalism, in my opinion. You know, just let the yeah. uh, people sometimes just cannot stand Apple success or Microsoft success or Android success, whatever, and will spike themselves just to just to get at uh, what they you know what they don't want to see happen. So I, I, I think it's just that that's my point on Steve Jobs. And man, it's like, I hope yeah. made it. Uh, before we move on to any other point, was there any you, you kept wanting to say something, Scope, but you didn't? Oh uh, no, I was just uh, agreeing with uh, Mr. Bit on what he was saying. That's all. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it will be interesting to say this. I guarantee you, there's going to be for the next year. There's going to be people. Profitizing on anything that goes wrong with Apple saying, oh, it's because Steve oh, ever yeah. now I feel terrible now. Actually, you're right. I feel terrible. Now it's going to be, well, what would Jobs have done? Oh, you guys are screwing us. Well, and, and, and on that note, what do either of you think, or, or both of you, whoever wants to go first, the fact that Apple has this little think like Steve Jobs boot camp for some of their people right now? Do you think that's okay. a good thing, bad thing? I like it. Well, I don't think it's a boot camp to say think like Steve Jobs. His university is a work at yeah. university. It's like I said, it's it's impossible. You could have a roadmap for one year out, and guess what? Six months out, the market changes. That plan has just gone to crap. It's just shit. It's worthless because you have to make responses on how uh, the market plays out. You have to be dynamic. And, there, and, and I'm sorry, there's no way I'm going to believe it's some, that Jobs literally sat there and made some sort of matrix outcome. You know, if statements else and this, then do this. You know, for for well, and, and for, even if he China. did, there's about That's, there's yeah. there's three things you can't possibly quantify all the variables for in the markets that Apple is most successful in, like you're talking about the iOS versus Android arena, which is fixing to blow up like a powder keg because towards the end of next year, there's Windows 8 and mm -hmm. there's uh, BlackBerry doing the other thing. And there's the 
pure Linux thing that Nokia is going to be doing. So, I mean, it's there's three animals that we don't even know the shape of them that are fixing to stir the whole pot up. Whatever roadmap there is can't possibly account for all the variables of that. So, some decisions are going to have to be made. I, I don't dismiss any of them, even RIM. RIM is actually suffering a similar fate that Apple did when they were searching for their OS. RIM got comfortable, they were large, and started to lose their identity because they they didn't see the limits of, of their software. And that is, you know, it's complacency when it happens. And now it's crunch time, and it happened at a time that's very critical where... Well, uh, but if HP spins off their stuff, RIM could buy WebOS and fix all of that overnight. I mean, you know... I heard that well, in RIM is perfect, so much Amazon is, is pulling, no, acquiring no, WebOS. Oh, Amazon's going to have it? Uh, uh, it's confirmed that they're looking and interested in buying it. Whether, whether the new CEO... Uh, Let's WebOS go from HP is another story. If they decide to let it go, it was confirmed in articles that Amazon is interested. So, okay. A anyways, getting back on topic to job. Sorry to go PCV Mackey. <laughs> but um, okay. Look, you know, in, like in terms of the uh, university, like the, I, I guess what is it like the Steve Jobs University deal or whatever it is. Uh, well, look, the guy was hugely successful. At the business game, you know, so I don't see anything wrong with somebody wanting to, you know, basically partake of, uh, partake of some of his thoughts on that, you know, to try and um, learn how to think more like him so that they can be successful too. I mean, the guy came in, you know, he co founded Apple Computer, then he founded Next, then he, you know, then he bought Pixar and helped it expand and, you know, died a billionaire. So I don't know anybody that really wouldn't want to. I, 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 I don't necessarily disagree with that. I'm just not sure you can, like Marcel's saying, that you can actually teach that. That's like saying, okay, think Walt Disney, think Bill Gates. I mean, that... Yeah, it's so difficult to do. Yeah. I mean, you can teach a work yeah. ethic, but there's, it's, impossible, it's impossible to teach that intuition. Oh yeah, well yeah. Was, yeah, well, yeah. You can't really teach, but like, you can't really teach instinct. You know. Yeah, but, exactly. That's a good word. Yeah, you can't teach the instinct. Yeah, exactly. no, like, you can't really teach instinct, but you know, every little. But the work it. ethic, absolutely. But see, I think to Jobs, the work ethic in the topology of Apple is important to him and how he wanted the company run. So I think that's probably a lot of what the Apple University was about is that maintaining that structure uh, and work ethic. Place. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and less about trying to make a Jobs clone or something. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I can see that being a benefit. I, th I, I hope y'all are right. If that's trying to make a Jobs clone program, I mean that that Walt Disney well, tried I, to. I, I can't. I can't ever agree that the university is about creating another Steve Jobs because if that that's a contradiction to what Jobs is, then you don't understand Jobs if you were to believe that. Is that right. it's just for, yeah. Jobs would do that. Okay. Um, did either one of you hear about the um, WBC? No, I, I don't. I don't want you to go over this personally about the the. Uh, I don't even want to mention their name because they don't even deserve. Any well, I, I I I I already said it, but we'll pretend I didn't. <laughs> I said the initials. For those who know what I said, what's well, not for everyone else, we'll move on. It, you know what? Regardless of what I think about, I don't like it. <laughs> it's like, it's, okay. Um, uh, let me see. That's like, that was the bashing. It's, okay. Getting on the reverse side of this, since we don't want to go into that one. What do we think about the Apple fanboyism going on, too? You know, we, it's the reverse problem. The It's just slapping anyone... Uh, like, what happened to Stallman's comment? Stallman. Yeah, Stallman was happy that Jobs died. No, that's not what he said. He, I thought he was, that was, that His exact words were, I'm not glad he's 
dead, but I'm glad he's gone. You know, he wasn't happy that oh, he's that dead. Guy. Yeah, yeah, he was just, it, he was... Yeah, I'm glad he's gone. Yeah, it basically, it, 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 that's a mean way of saying my personal feelings. You know, I am not an Apple fan. I have not agreed with the Apple philosophy. I criticize Apple all the time because I don't like that philosophy, but... I don't like to see anybody die, you know. No, yeah, yeah, silence here. It's like nobody deserves to die. Not Jobs, not Mr. Bill, not even people guilty of bigger evils than theirs. But we all deserve the end of Jobs' malign influence on people's computing. That's his, that's his thing. Yeah. So, do we... Th I mean, there's people who are basically well, trying to vivisect him over that. I, there's, 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 well, I mean, there's... I don't there's, care about that guy. You just saw it. I actually had heard about the article, but I just thought, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. You know? I mean, there's gonna there's... Be fan... Huh? No, I was saying that there's going to be fanboy, the Apple fanboy or the Apple purist response when there's Apple hate going on. And that, you, we, the, re, the thing of it is, is we see uh, a lot of both because both are active. And then when, when well, I mean, I don't like, state, like, I don't like yeah. the Apple hate myself, but... You know, I mean, people write, like, people write uh, negative or semi-negative articles about Apple and Steve Jobs all the time. So, yeah. you know, I'm just, like, I'm not even going to read the person's article because I don't want to even give them a hit. You know, I'm not going to go to his, like, I'm not going to go to his, uh, you know, to his blog or whatever and, you know, blow, you know, blow up his blog. Like, I'm not going to give his blog hits, uh, you know, for something like that. I'll just stick over here in my, you know, my little circle and everything. I'm not even going to think about that guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, I mean, let me give a context of history of stuff like that. There's always been an Apple. I mean, we've, we've gone no, over... No, 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 no. I know there, uh, there are always a lot of... Yeah. You know, but I mean... <laughs> Even Scopus and I were part of, uh, back in the old days, here, like maybe back in 08, 07, when, when YouTube was rampant with just anti-Apple anything. I mean, there were fleets of people that would create anything anti-Apple. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, people like Scopus, myself, and uh, uh, Gareth Hall, and, and others would, would start to respond and say, look, okay, they, enough is enough. Let's, let's set the, the record straight kind of. So, yeah, yeah. Come to think about it, that's around the time that um that 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 he made uh you yeah. know, I I don't think he did any of you Mackians any favors. <laughs> he was so easy to. <laughs> he had a huge following though. Uh, yeah. and, and, and on that note, do we think that? Uh, in the coming years that the Apple fanboys are going to come out of the woodwork and, you know, basically trying to, like, be an anti-shield for Apple or something? Or do we think that'll die down towards the end of this year? I think that, I think that the, like, I think that the typical Mac versus PC stuff uh, will remain the same. I don't think that there's going to be any type of, like, you know, jihad or whatever. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I don't think it's going to be like the holy war or anything like that, you know. All um, PCs must become the, the Mac will rise again, all Macs! <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it'll, I, I don't think it'll ever really get to that, you know, point. I mean, look, you know, look at YouTube. I mean, um, you know, the, the, like the whole Mac versus PC scene on YouTube uh, you know, it's kind of dead compared to the, uh, you know, to the way it was back in like 2008, 2009. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, when was the last time, you know, you know, when was it, like, when was the last time that anybody heard from, you know, a lot of the real major, like, Apple fanboys or even PC fanboys? Yeah. You know? I think us moderates who just kind of go over the pros and cons of the various platforms are really all that's left of that. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, I mean, the only, like, the only, uh, like, the only really major, like, Apple fanboy that's still around is uh, Howdy Do. Is he around? 
Yeah, he is. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, really? Yeah, I thought like, he was just going. Timing sucked. Uh, I, 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 I have. I, 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 I knew it was going to end. I knew it was going to end. I made the video. I mean, it went. When he retired, like when he resigned, not, I knew it was over. But. It, you know what? I. I you you called that. I I was convinced I he was stepping aside. I thought he had beat it. Yeah, it's like you were right. He was on death's door. That's. I, that. I kept trying to pound people's heads. I said we have to come to terms that this is significant. You know, I didn't. I, I was. I look at my video. I I stress it without wanting to really set the alarms off and say that the man's going to die. Even though that's what I'm trying to say. I'm just like, look, this is significant, people. There is no way on God's green earth, or you don't understand Jobs. Jobs is not a Bill Gates that just goes fine, bomber. Yeah, here's the range of the ship. Well, no, that, that's why I was saying I was convinced that there was some internal squabbling in Apple that had, like, I know. shysted I mean, in hours. Serious, serious, that's around. I was like, no. This is, <laughs> I, I remember no. on our show, I was like, I was scared because I was like, man, I, I just, I hope, I wish him uh, many more years of health because I, I was just, you know, I was like, wow. For that to happen, it, it's imminent. Well, and like I was making all these comments, and, and everybody in the industry was the news people. Everybody was getting on Cook when he was doing that uh, 4S announcement, going yada yada. But now that we look at it in retrospect, I mean, Jobs died the next morning. It, they had to know. They, oh, yeah. it, they had to. They, 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 it had to be in everyone at Apple's head. Oh, Jobs yeah. is on his deathbed. They had to sure. all know. <laughs> yeah. Knew, there was about a 48 hour period where they knew it was, uh, was going to be in it's like it's going to be yeah. in the next few days they didn't know exactly when but they were all as a, so it you know we can't really and part of the reason why you know I did that video was was number one I can't stand uh, what he died of but I, I, I have a personal uh, grievance and uh, I don't know that's the wrong word but a personal uh, uh Hate for, for cancer, and okay. uh, I think I, I think the day that he decided to resign, and I because I lived through that when he resigned, and I was like, I really wonder what went through the poor guy's head when he knew that that there was nothing that he could do. He was in the middle of this war with this god awful plague uh, of an illness, and he had built and I mean taken his company. I'm sure that he had. Smiles upon smiles about the success that that uh, he was happy with with Apple, and then and then for his health to cheat him, and that I just hope that that there's a period, and I'm sure there was, no, um, that that he he was at peace with it and said, oh, you know, fine, my body's failing me, um, you know, this I, uh, this is I, I'm content with what it is, but still, there's always that back, always that back part that that was the original force and driver that motivates you as a person that actually, you know, the entrepreneur, the one in the garage, that, that, that spark that pushed you from that point on to where you are, that's still back there, even though you've made peace with it, there's like, I have to walk away from this. And that, I just, I, I keep rethinking about that moment for somebody like that, um, on how hard that must have been. Well, and cancer is a weird disease, because I, I, I know personally four people uh, one of which was really uh, rather young, you know, it was just high school, back, back when I was in high school, you know, uh, the one in high school managed to, to beat it, it took them 18 months. Also had a friend of the family, uh, found out they had, uh, it looked for a while there like they were going to beat it, you know, they were great, they were doing good, and then they just deteriorated rapidly over the course of like eight weeks. Right. Um, and then there's two other people with it right now going. I know it. It, it's actually five. Then there's my aunt that um, managed to beat it too, but at the I cost of losing did, many of the things they value in this world because yeah. their body's not what it was. <laughs> yeah. My brother-in-law and my father are are, are uh, survivors. Yeah. I like. I have a couple of friends that are. Currently fighting it right now, so yeah. this is um, an eight-year battle. It, it, that's the thing.
thing. When it comes to that disease, it's there's. I mean, really, personally, what would y'all want? Would you rather have the drawn out upwards of a decade plus, or the you go from great to uh, and like over almost overnight? You know, which one would you rather have the drawn out or the the quick? If I it had, I think everybody would want it quick. I mean. My my grandfather on my, my, my uh, on my mom's side, he, he had a uh, uh, what was it a hemorrhage, and uh, he all he did is he woke up, complained of a headache, uh, was about ready to eat breakfast and hit the floor, and that was it. That, I mean, game over, like like somebody unplugged from the wall that quick. That's and, unfortunate. Uh, I mean, I always tell my wife and I always joke, you know, when we retire, we want to go sailing around, and. I always tell my kids, well, you know, if I'm that old and I can't handle the boat, I don't care, because I want to go out quick. Maybe, you know, maybe some wave will come and take my ass out, and that's it. Over and done. Well, I, you know, I, you I, say I that when you retire. I mean, jo Jobs wasn't that old. No, he was, that's what I'm saying. It's like, the, the, he, when you're, when you're that artistic, and I know because, you know, I've, I think those that have followed me, you know, I used to be a comic book artist. I, I create music and all kinds of stuff. Although I'm extremely analytical on YouTube as Mr. Bit One Zero. All of my previous everything is, is, is about art. And I know that you're, you're constantly always having, and whether, they're, whether, whether it's something that's uh, productive or an absolute just... Uh, cloud nine type stuff. You, when you are when you are at any stage, you're always just pretty much wandering, and, and you have directions, and and it's a it's a constant a constant uh, internal internal battle. And I'm sure that when Jobs hit and started his eight year battle against cancer, that the amount of frustration that probably uh, went through because of it, because. An artist doesn't want to have. There's no limits usually. There's there's not a, there's no there's none of these these hard restrictive metal um, lines that, that say that many of us have because you know uh, a lot of us we, we are creatures of repetition and what's comfortable and why change it. But a lot of artistic people and why a lot of society goes oh they're these wacko artic, artistic idiots, you know, a lot of times, but it, but that, whether you're an analytical person or an artistic person or you have a, you have both, um, the artistic side doesn't like limits, and I can, I can just sympathize and empathize with, uh, with uh, what he must have, the battle uh, that, that he had to put up, you know, it's like, it's, it's, imagine this, it's like my uh, uh, grandmother, she had a sound mind, and I think she died at what ninety four. I can't remember. It was 90, she was ninety four years old. So her mind was sharp as a tack, but her body completely failed. Can you imagine what you must mentally go through when you want to do something? You're, you're telling you're telling your body to do something. Your body is just like turned off. It's got to be one of the most vicious things to live through. Yeah. No. You know, on, like on his age, like, you know, like on him, like on his dying at 56, uh, you know, if like, you know, the age a person is when they die isn't really that, in, you know, isn't really that important. Uh, the important thing is what they accomplished in their life. Um, you know, there are plenty of people out there that live to be 100 years old and didn't accomplish anything in their life. So. Oh, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. Some people don't touch touch the world, but I don't think there's a single human being that's walked this planet that in the whole span of their life they accomplished nothing at all. Well, I'm I, I, just speaking figuratively, of course. I mean, uh, you know, my grandmother lived to be 100 years old, uh, and she spent most of her life handicapped. You know, she didn't really, you know, like she didn't really make that many waves in the world. Um, now, I'm not saying that she didn't really accomplish anything in her life, but at the same time,
same time, you know, she lived a very long, you know, life as a, you know, as a person who couldn't walk or couldn't uh, really do for herself. You know, that's all I'm saying. I, I, I know what you're getting at there. Yeah. Well, yeah, about impact. Like, and I guess that's kind of parallels Job's comment about wanting to make a ding in the universe. We all really contribute. I mean, it, with, uh, the, the, the complexity of variables that I, that I always like to, to put fit things in, uh, and then when I like to talk philosophically with some friends and family, is that, you know, say, say like when I, went my, when I met my wife, right? We were in college or, or whatever. The impact that we all have, even if you think it's insignificant, is that I as a variable, my wife as a variable, we meet, fall in love, and that in itself has an exponential effect. Now I have three children, right? Those children, my children have children, just like I am a child of my parents. And then we, we, we all make dings in the universe. Now how, 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 how large, as in, as in the rate in which you change, which can be argued, okay, well Jobs obviously had a rate of changing uh, variables at a far greater quantity because his reach was wider. But it doesn't diminish anybody else's contribution as life witness. Us interacting make exponential and variable outcomes. Just by well, you saying hello to... and saying one simple thing that I like your shirt could have a profound exponential effect on an individual. Okay, chaos theory. Uh, on, the note of, uh, 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 on the note of kids, do we know what either is... Do we know what his son or his daughter... I don't really know anything about his son or his daughter. Kids are a mystery. Nobody really knows anything about his family. Say that again, Scope. His kids are like a mystery. Nobody really knows anything about his family. He's very private. Yeah. He's very Apparently, that has something, according to the book, according to the book that's coming out, and I take that with a grain of salt. Apparently, that's why he wanted that uh, biography written, mm -hmm. um, was for them. At least that's how it's being marketed. I don't know if that's actually true or not. That's. I, I can I can I can believe it that he was he was quoted in saying I want my children to know that I put it in my video. Well, I'll thought that was uh, uh, awesome. For because I, I can imagine a man in his position, uh, and even even this, this, uh, doctors that I know uh, have very little time uh, to be at home, and and they very much want to be part of the family. And there's a there's a there's a tearing effect between career and family. I myself experienced that. I was supposed to go into counterterrorism and live across the pond and study for it. Uh, and then just decided to say, ah, I'm just going to stick with programming. And uh, I chose to be closer um, with my kids and, and, and raise a family than that, rather than, you know, doing whatever else that may have taken a tremendous amount of time. Maybe I, I would have gone through three marriages. Who knows? You know, but uh, we all, you know, we all make decisions, and I kind of, and it, 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 there's no right or wrong in what I'm saying. It's just we all choose paths uh, that that we feel uh, will better control our lives in the direction we want. I believe that Jobs, in the position that he was, probably very much wanted to be a more a family man than he probably could muster. Although I'm not going to, I'm going to, I pretty much think that he probably was the best father that he could be uh, with the amount of uh, liability and responsibilities that he took on. Well, except for the whole thing. Well, it, it, no, but like, see, here's the thing. We don't know how much of that's fact and how much of that is Pirates of Silicon Valley having fun with innuendo. Well, no, no, it, it has been said that, yes, that he, he, he was that way. I think Wozniak confirmed that in an interview. But we all make mistakes. Yeah, and Lord, I'm living with you know, uh, my own, and, and people in my own family that have done similar things that they, they have come back, apologized for, and tried to make up for it. And, I, and who are we to take away from that? Well, I and mean, this is a topic I try and stay away from because I don't exactly have the best family relations when it comes to stuff. <laughs> then, then, then your argument does stand. If they don't want to seek uh, forgiveness or uh, accept their mistake, then, then they are a, a worse person, uh, in my opinion. But Jobs yeah. did uh, 
re well, the thing is, we're all human beings. Mm, yeah. You know. You know, and you know what like I'm saying? human, just I, like I, everybody else. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear this. Am I talking over Scopeless? Because I'm hearing. You, you were for a second. What did you say, Scopeless? I was saying we're all human beings, and Steve Jobs is no different. Exactly. You know? Yeah. He's done some good in his life. He's also done a lot of stuff that wasn't exactly. You know, and, and well, you know, honestly, I would say upwards of forty to sixty percent of the contributions Jobs has made through his life is honestly going to depend on whether you agreed with him or not. Jobs is one of those people who was stubborn. No, I can't accept that because it, it doesn't matter whether you accept it or not. No, 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 no. no. The thing is, he's his the nature of his personality is he's stubborn and he's going to go where he's going to go and he's going to follow it to its end. And some things are a matter of opinion, which means there isn't a right or wrong. There's this opinion, and he's and, and, and his. So, right, but, but what I'm saying is that if it's, if it's, if it's an argument about, well, Apple technology sucks, and there was no contribution, I mean, I can't, that, I mean, to me, that's all right. No, 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 no. It, at the end of the day, I'm talking about the, you know, uh, 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 an Apple, Apple product is not the best for everyone. That has nothing to do with that, son. It, it's just, and that and that is that's an opinion. You know, it's you either agree or you disagree or you sign. And that's an opinion. There isn't a right or wrong there. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, I can like I can agree with that. Um, you know, yeah, like a lot of like a lot of the things that um, that Steve Jobs believed, a lot of. Um, that 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 you know, uh, fans of his like myself and other people, uh, you know, like about the guy, you know, really has to do a lot with his personality and and, and our agreement with his opinion. Um, you know, but I mean, you know, like you can't really argue with success at the end of the day. I, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I could, but now's not the time to do that. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, no, wait a minute. Success is success. Okay, does it last from here on out? Okay, well, that's a different thing. But the, the success part, I mean, has already taken place. I mean, it's yeah. like it's like I'm saying. It's like I was trying to convey before. The impact of Apple it cannot be disputed. Now, whether, however, if people want to try to debate that, like I said, I think that's just denial. I mean, CEOs have been fired in response to this, like this tablet movement, because they want to be. More like Apple, there is a clear and utter impact that Apple has contributed, which Jobs is, was clearly a part of, both as a salesman and as a coder or a, te a techie, whatever you want to call it, uh, that are just indisputable. Now, you could be a hater of Apple and never use any Apple technology. That's fine. It didn't. It, 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 it did not directly affect you. But Windows does have direct elements involving in the evolution between Apple's technology and Microsoft technology. I, 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 oh, wait a minute, and that's also reciprocating as well. All right, that, that reciprocates also in the direction from Microsoft to Apple. As, as I, 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 I would argue some of the Apple effect does directly affect you whether you agree with Apple or not because like you're talking about CEOs getting fired and so on and so forth Apple has this wedging effect on the industry uh, because you know they it's, there are some people who love the Apple way and then there are people who just as adamantly want nothing whatsoever to do with the Apple way and when Apple has successes and others in the industry want to copy it that has a negative effect on those who want nothing to do with the Apple way because then what they want goes away because of Apple having a prosperous time and and sure. vice versa. Sure. It, it's sure. like, it, it can be harmful to a certain class of user. Again, that has nothing to do with right or wrong, good or bad, or anything else. It's just opinion. Let, let me say this much. Uh, what about and the I think, um, go ahead, Scope. Don't like the Apple logo, but actually, you know, the Apple logo has been around for a long time. The Apple logo has been around for a long time. The Apple logo has been around for a long time. The Apple logo has been around for a long time. The Apple logo has been around for a long time. And I think the economists got it wrong in that they misunderstood. But I understand the direction they're coming from. In the old days, it was business bleeding into 
consumers. In other words, business technology uh, was then dumbed down and made for consumers. Okay, uh, lots of technology, and, and, and Windows is essentially that. Windows was a business platform, and that's why it, it spread like wildfire. It took over business and then bled into our homes and also became our consumer device at the same time. The reason why I bitch like pre predominantly about iOS is that I all I expect my performance, uh, you know, from, like from a desktop, uh, a lot of it to come down into the phone. And I know that iOS can do it, but it is limited. Uh, such as uh, Scopus and I were debating, debating like, okay, it's the software. It's not necessarily the hardware, but, uh, but what they choose to have as software barriers. And but you know what? I can understand that position. Okay, but that's why I don't say that, oh, iOS should be, you know, uh, 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 left for crap and don't buy it. I, if people, it's like, if people want, a, if I know that people want a certain result, then that result, I, I'm going to best say what operating system or mobile operating system is going to best suit them. Apple, and I'm, and I'm still going to be on the Economist article, the Economist article says that, now consumer technology is going to business. I don't agree with that at all. It's still very much business. And that's where the economist lost its, its sight. The thing of it is, is that so much of the technology that, of, of enterprise has come down and become a commodity that now there's so much commodities that are now spawned from enterprise that those commodities can now be packaged and, and create consumer devices. That doesn't mean that consumer devices are recontributing uh, to enterprise. Enterprise is constantly innovating and enterprise will always be the most expensive forms of technology out there because quite frankly businesses say I have a bottom line, this means a, a, a great exponential number and will pay huge amounts of money for it because quite frankly they're a business. They have a dynamic income that states if I spend 10% of my total growth right here for something it's made up for exponentially versus a consumer that's like got other liabilities. It's not the same as a company. It's like what is going to best suit me for a consumer and so on and so forth. And that's what Apple tuned in on. Apple bringing iOS, and I I recognize that. I just don't I just don't like my always argument about iOS is that look man, always leave the option. It doesn't take that much to leave the option. That's always what I've been arguing, right? But Apple's like saying... There's well, but that, that goes back to what I just... Yeah. What I was just right, saying. Right, but, right, but, but we, you and I always admit, we're not everybody. Apple understands that... You know why people get frustrated with Windows? Because they don't want all that complexity. It's like you with Linux. You like KDE because of all the options versus no, right? And, and there are many, many consumers I can tell you with they could give a crap about customization. I could argue all day long and tell them. And, and I did it with a Mac. I'm like, you know, my, the constant argument was, well, Mr. Pitt, why do I need to overclock my Mac? Well, if you overclock your Mac, it was time to run that much more faster. Well, I don't care about that. I'm already happy with what I have, right? And they're right. Who am I to come and say, oh, well, you're just an idiot because you're not... Well, no, but see, that, 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 that's why I'm saying to a certain degree that can hurt a certain class of user because, like you say, you and I are not the average user, but if we're this 5% of the user base, some of the stuff we need and we use and we, we have to have at a minimum to do our thing is going, if, if we're the only ones they're selling it to, is going to right. become so counterproductive to make at all that it just won't be on the market anymore. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a fear that we have, but it hasn't come true yet. See, like, I already had wine, and I was happy that they preserved, and it actually helped. Like, Apple Script and Automator are even more powerful. And I, would do, I, I, would do, I mean, I would tell you, probably 80% of Apple users don't even know what the hell Automator is. You know, and so oh, um, I, I could make some comments on some of the features that have been added to Lion, but I will be quiet this I once. <laughs> I, but you know I have no I'm idea. Sure. I haven't even used Lion yet. <laughs> I, I don't care for what added. I, I hear Scopus again. Go ahead. Huh? What happened? Oh, okay. I, well, I, I, I haven't even, I haven't even used Lion yet, so. Uh, about the you know about the features, I mean I don't really know that much about. But go on. Uh, no, what I was 
saying is that I don't care that they're bringing a lot more of the touch and the iOS scale with launcher and all this other stuff. You know what? They preserve the pro side of things. They just don't advertise it. And they actually improved a lot of pro features like they did with Automator and, and, and Apple Script. So I'm happy with that. Now, on iOS, iOS is not this <laughs> is not my favorite mobile OS. I've made it extremely clear because I don't have those options. It is shut out, period. It's, it's done. But you know what? I don't expect, though, on a mobile device yet to be completely desktop. But I have other limitations that iOS has presented to me. And I'm going to just wipe out the whole call dropping thing. But th th there's, there's just the way that I need to navigate and want to get things done that I think iOS is far behind. But Android is even farther behind, uh, which, of course, I, I always... Say like WebOS, I really wish Apple would have uh, acquired uh, Palm. But uh, an example of which there was two pundits that were arguing. Um, Gruber uh, was one of them who argued that the closed buttons, the closed buttons of uh, iOS, and how it's much more intuitive. Hell no, iOS is much more intuitive than that. My wife has a phone and she asks me, how do I do this? How do I do this? It's not that clear intuitive. And, and quite frankly, we all have to come to terms with that because the mobile device is limited, it doesn't have our keyboard, it doesn't have our mouse that we are trained for in, 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 in high school or college, that there's a learning curve for any limited mobile device, whether it's a home button or, or like Android has those three buttons or like Windows Phone has those three buttons. There's a learning curve. But I guarantee you, a user, once they've obtained a learning curve, wants to utilize the fastest route to get something done on their phone. I can't tell you how many countless times, no matter what the mobile OS it is, that if there's a long email that I have to write, I'm just like, forget it. I'm going to do it when I get home. Because I'm not going to sit there and do it on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone or web OS, for that matter. Do, do we want to do we want to move on from Jobs into the uh, no, I mean, iOS well, stuff? We're discussing in, in, well, there's still no plenty of them. More than say about jobs. Uh, okay. Yeah. We're, we're, we're doing, we're, we're spawning argument, we're spawning discussion based upon the jobs, quote, the nerve center. Okay. Say. You know, with jobs and where we're going is the spawning discussion. So, I mean, it, it's, now I'm losing my train of thought. The, the, um, the thing about is, which I thought, and, <laughs> yeah, which I understood, he said, you know what? People don't need to do X, Y, and Z. They are never going to do it in their lives. They're well, never going to do it. And, and, he, and he understands that and sells product to address those people. There's a, there's a crap load up that are never, ever, ever going to be interested in features that I'm going to be interested in. And has finally sold the product. It's like, you know, you could almost say that since 1995 or 1990, no, I want to say 1991 on, we didn't really need to have all this kind of computing that we had that bled into our homes from business. Now we have. Now we're starting to make packages because those enterprise features have become such a commodity that we can ship them around. It's not that expensive. So that you know what? Maybe dumb it down is a wrong word, but let's say simplify the complexities of, of what computing used to be to what. The majority of people want to do today, and I understand that. They're, they're, most people give a crap about what I do. They want to get on their damn email and read a book, and by golly, the majority of applications downloaded for iOS are games. They want to have fun. Okay. You know what? It's money. They sell it. It's a unit sold. People want to play Angry Birds or whatever the hell it is, like this uh, lock safe game. Or I, you or know, I, 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 for the first time ever, I played Angry Birds, or earlier this week and I don't get it. I uh, whatever. <laughs> okay, this, uh, my point is that, <laughs> that Jobs understands that there is a there is a majority of users that for many years have had an have had an overcomplicated computer experience. Has and since technology has been uh, has, has has dropped in price and, and essentially become many commodities in different sectors from mobile parts to networking, to cloud-based backend, whatever, because those have been around for quite a while. Uh, that now we can, at a cost-effective package, say, you know what, we're done with overcomplicating your desktop 
consumer expectations of computing, and here you go. It's a simplified version of really what you what you wanted, what you normally do uh, on, on a basis, and you're not going to miss all the things that that you may have had before. Now, but that, of course, goes against my brain and many other users' brains. But we're not the majority. So I, long as so long as as the options are available for me, I'm happy with at least the OS 10. On the I, I, and I and I have something to say. Yeah. Sc Scope, I keep hearing a crack out of your thing. Are are you talking or is that just static? I think it's just static. Oh, okay, I was, I was making sure you weren't saying anything. Sorry. No, no, no. I wasn't saying anything. Did you want me to adjust something on my end? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, uh, we my get it, it, it's Skype. We get crap every so often, unfortunately. Okay, I got I, I was just making sure you weren't trying to say something. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, what did it sound like I was saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. Apple listens, and, and I can, and, and I, and I know that for a fact because where iOS started and where it is now, a lot of the features that are in iOS are from people like me bitching over and over at Apple and saying, "What the hell are you doing?" That they eventually put it in. So I can't say that Apple's just completely being an idiot in terms of a mobile OS. Um, they do listen. And I've seen the results. You know, I have uh, well, now, on Jobs, that brings up an interesting thing because one of the things that Jobs was very adamant about was not asking the user what they wanted because his, his personal opinion on that was if you ask the user what they want, you know, they'll say, what I have, cheaper, and faster. You know, it's like it's like we already know that we don't need to do a focus group to find that out. Just would ignore the. Do you think Apple will have the gumption to? Personally, I think that's no, one, I, I one think of the. I think it's a mistake. I think it's a mistake for anybody to do that because you'll never you'll never have a concept product. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Microsoft does it. Everybody does it. They they make the direction, <laughs> and the consumers choose whether they want it or not. That's what the whole point of competition and options and products are. Maybe one company A gets it right for you, and, and uh, company B, C, and D don't. But well, but, but, but what I mean is so, something that Apple system. has done at no point in the past decade is that's have a true. focus group. That's not true. Nobody has nobody has created a product based on focus groups. Apple listens though. Uh, I, I, say I, say I that again, Scott. I'm saying that focus groups don't really help, uh, you know, in the technology. I you know, agree. Like, okay, they don't. Up with iPad. Right. Lots of people say, yeah, you know, the iPad should have X, Y, and Z. And then tablets came out that had those things, you know, and had the same or similar touch functionality and everything that were on Android. And those things came out and they didn't even really sell. People said, oh, well, you know, uh, a tablet should have Windows on it. What happened? They came out and they didn't sell. You know, the customer said what they wanted right. and, the, and the companies gave it to them. And then when it came out, it didn't sell. Well, I, I, I disagree that the companies gave it to them. What they did was they gave them that one tiny thing while taking the other eight things out, uh, which was like... Well, let's, let's, get, uh, let's, get, let's get something straight. I still think tablets in their current form are a fad. And, and that's predominantly, to me, because the as an economist, search, the search that has taken place in the response of the market, it's, it's too hyper. For it to be, for it to be like some, without having a demographic of saying it's the cool product now and I want it. I'm not diminishing the iPad. It's going to grow into something different later on. But for now, I think all tablets, and that's what the market is. We have successive now with Android and all the all subsequent post the iPad, incomplete systems, and we can't we cannot say that they are complete from the touchpad to the Zoom, to many of the Android tablets are just like, well, you know, whatever. Uh, well, and, and, and I agree with your philosophy about, you know, it's the oversimplified system, although I agree oversimplified is the wrong word, but if, and I, if that's what they ultimately wind up becoming, then that means five years no, from now when we have... Actually, I don't. I think it started from a very simple position. iOS started out very, very basic. And now it's becoming more complex, and iOS will only get more complex. Because what's going to Apple will make a product, right? But Apple listens to the complaints. So does Microsoft. So does many other companies. All companies do because they, they need to sell products, right? 
So what they do is they weigh the opportunity costs of... of That's your favorite of, word, opportunity costs. I, there is. There, everything is an opportunity cost when you make something. It's just the way it works. But uh, what will happen in Iowa, it has evolved from complaints after complaints to do X, Y, and Z, and they did. Uh, the iPad, even from the first gen to the second gen, a lot of it is, is not only a response from complaints, but a one-upping of where Apple knew that gaming was, was becoming the predominant force of application downloads. And guess what? Put a dual-core GPU in the iPad 2, of which no other subsequent tablet has done. And did people ask for that dual-core GPU, though? But Apple realized where iOS strong suit was coming from based upon applications purchased and download from their own store and, and took advantage of that. And I think that that's where the give and take comes from of we're making a product, love it or hate it, and then it's sold, it's out there. Okay, let's see what the consumer response is. And then Apple listens, and a lot of times developers, because that's how we've evolved essentially from a web-based application only to native applications to now even flash using backend services to a client side on iOS. Uh, since you, know, you brought up Flash, do we think would that no, be dis would no, that be no, disrespectful no. to Jobs to put no, Flash? I don't think on? they're going to have a, a Flash native client client play unless Adobe unless Adobe uh, um, really appeases Apple's battery life expectations. See, Apple's core on mobile devices is how long will our battery last. Everything else takes a second seat to that. And you can see it within how everything is designed, how multitasking is designed, so on and so forth. I will be the first one to tell you, I love WebOS, but it will eat a battery faster than iOS. No, no doubt about it. Oh, that. no, yeah. When you let a power user start having actually using their device, oh, they can they can munch a battery like it's a buffet. <laughs> it's like I understand the majority of users aren't going to be doing the things that I want to do. That's why I like a replaceable battery like I have in my Palm 3 because I understand. I am pushing a damn thing to the limits of, uh, of what it's going to do. And but it's going to push back when you do that. <laughs> Apple's demographic is not made up of a lot of users like me. And why would they make a device to satisfy me when those are the guys like me? Well, here we go again. Overcomplicated. We're not, we're, not, we're not at the level yet of what Mr. Bit does with iOS. We may be uh, in the future, and maybe some of us uh, you know, will be there. And then, and then iOS will eventually evolve to feature sets that go to but I cannot deny it that iOS has evolved to become more complex from when it started, and it is continuing to do so. So is Android. Look at Google. Google's, Google is experiencing exactly what Microsoft did in its early days of just being on a tirade of software innovations just to throw them out like, in, like spaghetti noodles sticking to a wall. Since you brought up Google, do either one of you think Google? They're, they're, some Apple fanboys have come out and said Google delayed their ice cream announcement because they had always intended to do it late and they're just using Jobs as an excuse to get some free press. Do, do either one of you think that that's the reality or you think they're legitimately delaying it because. Well, I, 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 I think they're doing it because if they made an announcement now, nobody would talk about it. Everybody would talk about jobs. So yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's what I was going to say. Basically, basically, if they would have done their announcement, uh, you know, if they would have done their event uh, at the time that they had announced, it would have just been drowned out. Well, and, and nobody would have really been, I guarantee you, their speech is primarily, you know, like other people have said. You know, I iOS sucks. Look at look at all the things we do that iOS. Th you you know that's what their thing is, and it, nobody would listen to that right now. Here's here, here's the thing. I don't know if it's so much about being drowned out. Android, because of where it is right now, I think they're being more cautious. To be honest, that's my take on it. I could be wrong. I think that Android's learned its lesson from like being a sprint runner and just dropping features behind it and not even slowing down to, to let everybody keep up has learned to say, wait a minute, and I think there may be some things that they want to make sure everybody's on the same page before the release of ice cream, 
Because if they release it and there is, and not everybody's on the same page, it's going to go right back to like this argument of Android fragmentation, la di da, and all this kind of crap. And so my my stance is I think that they're actually trying to make everything on the same page versus worrying about being drowned out by jobs. Because there's enough people on Android, and obviously Android has a larger market share than iOS, that any announcement that Google would make would, would have, I think, a, a sizable following to say, oh, look at this, and whatever. But no, I think I think they're they're actually learning their lessons that they've done before and, and making uh, making more credible calculations on saying, well, you know what, maybe this vendor's not quite caught up. Let's wait a little bit and work with them because they're all about now. If you've noticed, keeping their partnerships more secretive, and they're yeah. gaining more partners in this secret circle and seeming to uh, work with them even more so for these big launches versus worrying about satisfying the open code, open source crowd and saying, yes, here's... And, and here's that is right. having a bit of a boomerang effect for the platform right. because, you know, that is the diehard, that is the base of the current Android user base. So it's they, like... They're going to release it, they're going to release it, but you know what, there's nothing wrong with them saying, look, we're going to release it, just hold your horses, you know? Right? That goes against the Stallman crowd, I understand. But they are going to release it. But the thing of it is, is as a company, and if they want to have a successful product, I would be in the same position to say, you know what, I'm good. I am open source. Just hold your freaking horses. I'll get it out. I got to make sure my VIPs are in order so that you know the consumers, at least the majority, which are not you, the super uber geeks, uh, have a have a, a damn good product. So. Okay. Um. Scope. You. Um. What. You steer us where we want to go next. Um. Okay. Like we just got finished talking about, uh, you know, Google delaying their event. Um. I don't know. Uh. Well, since uh, Steve Jobs uh passed away recently, uh, did anybody see any uh tributes or anything like that? Well, I, I, I know yeah. Bit did one. Um, oh, yeah. I, 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 I have to put a link into yours. I have half a mind to use it as the opening to this video, but then you wouldn't get the view credit. Well, you know, I, I was, I was, I'll be honest, I was uh, not the one who was really uh, sad with Jobs loss, even though I knew it was imminent when he resigned. I, I had come to terms, and I go, oh, wow. Because, like I say, the way you love her or hate him, he has a dynamic, and that man can put you can 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 put bomber can make bomber sweat can make rim sweat and vice versa. It can reciprocate where bomber makes his job sweat, and that's it's like that's the spark that I love that goes back and forth between these companies that we need to have rather than some damn dominant party that becomes this monogam monogamous, very boring, very slow improvement of technology. You need these 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 guys that have this spark, and I'm not saying I'm not going to say that Bomber necessarily has a spark, but Microsoft certainly has proven that they have a very creative people behind it, especially like with Windows 8. I'm very I'm pretty impressed with I've got I've got it here, uh, and where they're going and the direction that they've that they've taken. I think that Rim is just in a cycle that's going to pan itself out uh, once they get QNX on board with everything and work all their kinks out. Um, WebOS, it may be a lost animal. That's my favorite up mobile operating system. It may go the way of BIOS. I hope not. I hope I hope that uh, Amazon may acquire it or HP gets reinvigorated with the new CEO and, and, and does something well with it. Uh, but the loss of jobs, I think, was very profound in terms of that competitiveness and the back and forth between companies in technology that that keeps keeps that ball rolling. I mean, look at the pace and acceleration of, 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 of technology that we get as consumers uh, is strongly supported by the way companies respond to each other in terms of competition. Uh, so yeah, I, th I, I, I sat there when I heard the announcement and I was at my son's tennis tennis practice and I had gotten a text message from a colleague of mine because, you know, I didn't even, I wasn't even watching the news. And I, all, all he said on the text message, I'll never forget it, he's like, Jobs is dead. And I was like, what? And I had to go on my phone and, and, and see what the hell he was talking about. And 
couldn't believe, you know, I was just like, wow, it happened sooner than I thought. I thought, so when I resigned, I thought that he was going to go for that. He was like, my health, my health is, is now at a point that I need, it's very serious. And that I think that he was just going to dedicate a lot, a lot more of his time to trying to defeat cancer. Uh, and, and just dedicate every resource that he had doing that. That, that may have been Plan A. Yeah, and and um, that was my that was my belief. But man, it, it, I think maybe it was just gosh damn it, it was just too far gone uh, for him to uh, com combat it as much as that I had hoped he he, he, he was probably trying to do in, 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 in my mind when he, when he resigned. So uh, I had sat there. When I went into the video, I said, "What would best serve Jobs in my in, 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 the, in the context for what I, for the respect that I have for the man uh, as a supporter and as a criticizer?" And I decided to use things that were factual uh, by using his own quotes um, and then using and, and using my own words by saying, you know, "Like you know, I am better." Or I said no, and stuff like that. Uh, for what I thought were the most outstanding qualities of the man, so that's how I, I figured I would get a tribute. You know, I, so. yeah, yeah. I really like. I really liked the uh, you know the video that you made just a bit. You know, it was um, it was really nice. Um, I mean, I, I, I aside from Marcel's, I've only seen like a few. They're, they're more fanboy tributes than actual tributes. Yeah. They're more like one last jab at the PCV Mac Apple 1C thing than just honoring or paying homage to Jobs. Yeah, well, well the, the, you know, the best, uh, the best tributes that I've seen were actually uh, from people that were more moderate. Uh, you know, like, the, uh, like this guy, uh, uh, Mr. Hawk, he does, uh, you know, puppets. And, you know, he did the uh, Steve-O show and he did the uh, uh, I like to deal with um, with uh, 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 what's his name the, like the old guy uh, does the three with the glasses and the goatee oh god <laughs> I, I oh you mean from like the Muppet show yeah. no 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 it's no, a real guy bad. he does like all of the I like I like like he's usually like on point for all of the like, uh, like when the iPad came out he was first guy to get one to review and all this other stuff. Hey, anyway, uh, oh. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I can always just go find yeah. the video or find the guy's page and link it to you. Uh, the, you know, the point is that the guys of videos a lot of times are usually, you know, very comically, you, you know, critical of Steve Jobs and of, you know, his company or uh, fans of his company or what have you, right? And he made one of the most touching uh, tributes to Steve Jobs that I've ever seen. You know, and he's not even really like, he's not even an Apple fan boy, really. Well, like, yeah. and the only other one I've seen in that light has been, like, the Gizmodo comment one. Like, you know, the, the, the more has come to light in recent weeks on the Gizmodo thing, like the conversation Steve Jobs had with him before the whole thing went down over the iPhone 4 and stuff, you, you know, and it, it, um, that, that, that I would say is a tribute in that light. I mean, these are people who kind of indirectly got yada yada as a result of actions that went on and, you know, even they're, you know, taking a step back to... <laughs>
already stopped working there, but he was still going out there to have lunch with his friends and everything. And um, he was leaving the building, and right in front of him was Steve Jobs, you know, walking to his car, uh, you know, like he was walking to, like there was a car with the door sitting open because he had a driver or something like that. And, you know, some people were out in front of the Apple campus uh, taking, you know, they, 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 they were getting ready to uh, take a picture out, uh, you know, out in front of the Apple building. And one of the people, you know, the father of the family, uh, you know, turned to Steve Jobs and said, you know, hey, you know, uh, could you do me a favor? Could you take a picture of us? And all of a sudden, so the guy didn't know who Steve Jobs was. And Steve was like, oh, okay, you know, no problem. They're in and front of the Apple I campus don't... and they don't know who Steve Jobs is. Okay. <laughs> lots, of, lots of people who buy Apple products don't know who Steve Jobs is. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> like, to be honest, to be honest, a lot of people who, who you know speak negatively about Steve Jobs they really don't know. They really don't know. That's right. Steve Jobs. I know they don't know. But, yeah, like, I, I know. That's the thing that I hate. They don't know anything exactly about stuff, you know like, his time with Nick. They don't know anything about his time with Pixar. They don't know anything about. Well, and, and you know, so, so, uh, n- not not to speak ill of the dead, but a lot of that is indirectly Jobs' fault, and some of it has to do with the fact that uh, the f- he got bashed by the press a few times, and as a result, he basically would never talk to the press. He just he wouldn't say anything. He became very reclusive. You know, aside from standing on stage and doing the keynote, nobody knew anything about Jobs. <laughs> it's, and yeah, but, but but what about what about that time that you got into that um that, that little back and forth email with that one guy? Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I just found that. Yep, yep, yep. And 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 you know, also don't forget, you know, you're holding it wrong, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, Steve Jobs, like like well, Steve Jobs has always kind of uh, shunned the uh, you know the media. Point anyway, um, you know, and yeah, you know, like a lot of people don't know about Next because, to be honest, uh, Next was a company that was more or less kind of snuffed out, <laughs> you know, when it came out. Uh, you know, and ironically, uh, you know, the story is that Next was kind of kept out of the market by Apple. You know, when you form Next, Apple. Well, it, some of the particulars of that have to do with Jobs' agreement with <laughs> Apple, and that yeah. you know, next, next was kind of pushed into it had to be over here to be in compliance with Jobs' agreement with Apple, and, and that kind of put it in a bad position to really be. Well, I don't know what agreement Jobs had with Apple. I'm concerned that, but I do know that they sued him. Uh, well, it, 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 it was it, it had to do with like his non-compete agreements and other things basically next had to be indirect and other stuff and it just it, yeah. It, 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 yeah they had to um, they had to get approval from Apple yeah and it, it, it created too many issues next was yeah. never going to be able to be with by still being in compliance with those agreements yeah but it's also ironic that, uh, that the germ uh, of some of Apple Best software today was, you know, was first planted at Next, you know, mm-hmm. and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't know about that. Yeah, I, I kind of wish some of the features that were in Next OS had made it into the base versions of OS X, but that's me. Like which one? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, the early on, but, but they had to go through a transition. Yeah. So that, they, okay. had, they had, I mean, it has everything, and more so, but I mean, there's no way you can go from uh, OS, OS Classics to OS X um, with that much complexity starting off the gate. They just, they had to box it all. Yeah. You know, blue box, yellow box. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, but, you know, I mean, uh, Steve Jobs did a few interviews when he was with Pixar, you know, but after he sold Pixar to Disney, uh, it was no longer really in his hand. You know, but the point is, like, the point is, though, that if you're going to go through the trouble bad-mouthing a guy or whatever, it helps you mm-hmm. to actually, you know, go learn something about him. You know, and, you know, that, that that's one of the things that actually frustrates me a lot, you know. Um, you know, the, you know, uh, Steve Jobs. Is, uh, you know, Steve Jobs died, of course, a billionaire. But a large, a large chunk of his personal wealth came from his 
selling Pixar to Disney, you know, like, like Apple, like he, like he got a lot of money from his Apple stock and everything like that, but, you know, that money was tied up in stock the entire time, and Apple doesn't pay dividends. You know, that, that's something most people don't realize about Jobs. He made the bulk of his fortune in the time between Apple. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that Pixar thing was like a last ditch effort. You know, if, if that didn't work out, you know, then he wouldn't have made it. He would have been broke. So, but yeah. Um, kind of, it goes to show that one creative guy like George Lucas, you know, essentially where Pixar started from ILM, and they were ready to offshoot it. <laughs> it goes from it, it goes from one creative guy to another. You know, he's like, no man, he's got to got great potential for Pixar. Like that. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's like an awesome transaction. Transition. It is. Uh, we, we have more to go into, but real quick, I'm going to do a pause restart on the thing so we don't risk having a glitch in the vid. <laughs> I got you. I, I got to take a bathroom. Okay. <laughs>